Welcome back to 12 Days in March. In this edition, we launched the five-part series on atherosclerotic heart disease. In this video, we'll review the key derivatives on atherogenesis that you'll need to know for the USMLE Step 1 exam. And let me tell you something, there aren't many. And just for perspective, here are the five topics related to atherosclerosis that you should be familiar with, including the anginal syndromes, myocardial infarction, pathology of infarction, and prevention of the next one. Makes sense. And the sad truth, in spite of the importance of this topic, it seems to get little play at the NBME. Don't ask me why. Certainly cardiac disease is important, but they just don't seem excited about the steps in atherogenesis. They do care about progressive vascular obstruction and the factors that render plaques vulnerable to rupture, that being elaboration of matrix metalloproteinases from a variety of cells, including platelets, endothelium, smooth muscle cells, and the macrophage. We'll come back to this later. So Sachs is going to present atherogenesis in four quick steps. But as I write this, you can think about the process as a series of activations, all triggered by inciting factors that damage the vascular endothelium. And here is what it looks like. You smoke, and you mess up the vascular endothelium. And here comes the activation in response to endothelial injury. Platelets are activated, monocytes are activated, vascular smooth muscle cells are activated. Once activated, they work up an appetite and eat. At least the monocytes and smooth muscle cells do. Platelets don't have much of an appetite. What do they eat? LDL cholesterol. It's delicious. The activated smooth muscle cell will go on to elaborate extracellular matrix, including collagen and proteoglycans, while macrophages form foam cells that are destined to die a slow, horrible death, leaving a necrotic core of cholesterol crystals. And this plaque that formed from smooth muscle cells and macrophages, under the influence of platelet-derived growth factors and T-cell cytokines, can grow to occlude the vascular lumen. When that occlusive lesion exceeds 70 to 80 percent of the lumen, the patient will experience a mismatch between oxygen supply and demand and go on to develop anginal symptoms. If, on the other hand, that plaque destabilizes and ruptures as a result of matrix metalloproteinases, thrombogenic substances are exposed to the circulation, and the acute coronary syndromes become manifest. And that, my friends, is the whole enchilada, a series of activations following endothelial damage with the result of occlusion or thrombosis. That was easy, so don't smoke. All right, so now let's walk through those four steps one more time. Step one is characterized by an inciting event or trigger. This is where and how your traditional cardiovascular risk factors come into play. Smoking, diabetes, hypertension, and hyperlipidemia all lead to endothelial damage. This is key step number one. Once the endothelium is damaged, the whole house of cards comes tumbling down. And why is that? Because once the endothelium is damaged, how will the body respond? Bingo! Platelet adherence and activation. God bless them, just platelets being platelets. They see subendothelial collagen and they get excited. They stick to the vessel wall and activate. That's not good for a number of reasons, but most notably production of growth factors that contribute to intimal damage, as we will see. But the bigger issue complicating endothelial injury is an increase in permeability to circulating cells and molecules. So that is the second step. Following endothelial damage, there is an increase in permeability of the endothelial surface. And you really don't want permeable vessels. Because when the vessels are permeable, guess who shows up? Correct, monocytes and LDL cholesterol particles. You really don't want these players in your intima. It's not where they belong. So now we have tissue monocytes that differentiate into macrophages, oxidize LDL particles, and angry platelets. Where do we go from here? Are you ready? Smooth muscle cell migration and proliferation. The smooth muscle cells are key players in atherogenesis. You can see in this diagram, they waken from a quiescent state in the media and literally migrate into the intima where they will proliferate. That's really messed up. So what arouses them to awake from their slumber? Answer, growth factors and cytokines. There are many, but the commonly named factors include platelet-derived growth factor, vascular endothelial growth factor, and the macrophage-derived cytokines, including transforming growth factor. FYI, they don't specifically ask you the name of the growth factors. 
just be aware. Concurrently, the tissue macrophage and activated smooth muscle cell consume LDL particles, forming the characteristic foam cells. You got that? It isn't just the macrophage that forms foam cells. Smooth muscle cells participate in the fun as well. I highlight this point to underscore the ubiquitous role of the smooth muscle cell in atherogenesis. And speaking of smooth muscle cell, here is the final step you should be familiar with for the USMLE Step 1 exam. The smooth muscle cells, not fibroblasts, elaborate interstitial collagen and extracellular matrix. And the end result is an atheromatous plaque. In this case, we can see that thick and stable fibrous cap that becomes the target of derivatives in the anginal syndromes. And here is a summary of the four key steps just reviewed. That is really it. Let's walk through it quickly one more time and highlight a couple of common derivative questions that seem to pop up frequently and underscore a couple of the points addressed in this presentation. So step one is endothelial injury from multiple causes with exposure of subendothelial collagen and subsequent platelet and monocyte adherence. Step two, increased permeability with associated monocyte and lymphocyte adhesion and migration into the intima. Step three, macrophage, endothelial, and platelet-derived growth factors stimulate smooth muscle cell migration from the media with proliferation in the intima. In a parallel event, smooth muscle cells and macrophages consume the LDL particles that enter the intima through the damaged and permeable endothelium. These fat, happy cells are referred to as foam cells or lipid-laden macrophages. The result is intra- and extracellular lipid deposits. As a result of ongoing endothelial injury, the cycle continues with ongoing inflammation and resultant release of growth factors and cytokines. These promote ongoing smooth muscle cell differentiation and activation with production of collagen and extracellular matrix. The initial gross lesion in this process will be development of an intimal fatty streak. In time, as a result of ongoing remodeling, the end result is an atheromatous plaque with the characteristic fibrous plaque. The cap itself is continually remodeled with the balance of collagen synthesis and degradation determining the mechanical strength and thereby stability of the plaque. And this is where we conclude our discussion of atherogenesis. The next set of videos pick up the discussion focusing on the clinical presentation of angina and the acute coronary syndromes. Before adjourning, I will leave you with these two common derivative test questions that kick around the QBanks and NBMA. The first question goes on to describe an unstable patient with an ischemic EKG and elevated troponins. The question inquires about the enzyme which predisposes to this clinical outcome. Answer, the matrix metalloproteinase. They are the key players in destabilizing plaques causing their rupture. Be familiar with the role of metalloproteinases. The other schnoozer buried in the topic of atherogenesis comes back to the fibrous cap. A straightforward histology question. Which cell is responsible for synthesizing the damn thing? It's tempting to grab the fibroblast as around half of you do, but the correct answer is the vascular smooth muscle cell. Although it is not intuitive, you should have a general awareness of the ubiquitous functions of the vascular smooth muscle cell in atherogenesis. And that will do it for the topic of atherogenesis. Important topic for sure, but the test derivatives appear to be fairly narrow in scope. Seems the NBME is more interested in the clinical syndromes discussed in subsequent videos. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at 12 Days in March. Thank you.